Hello everyone, it's Elaine. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I am going to be creating a card featuring lots of lawn form goodies. So I'm starting off with this very special stamp set and I've cut them out using my silhouette machine and stamped them onto Copic friendly cardstock. And I'm going to be using my Copic markers to colour these in. So I have got the caps on the screen, but I've also popped them physically written out on the screen as well just for a short time i'll also have them listed down in the description box if you want to check that out so as i said i'm using these lawn form goodies today i have quite a few products i'll have them all listed down below the inspiration for my card today was the color throwdown challenge i don't know the exact number again i will pop that down in the description box it's a pink green yellow and white combo so i've tried to pick out those colors so that it matches the inspiration on the profile picture they've got up at the moment so I'm starting darkest to lightest, trying to put the darkest colour where the shadows would be. And I did have quite a big jump between that R29 and R24. So I do bring in some R27 just to help those reds blend together nicely. There is quite a lot of colouring in this video. So if you aren't interested in that or don't really want to sit and watch me colour, then please feel free to skip ahead. I really enjoy watching people colour and weirdly I enjoy it more when it's sped up. Um, that's just <laughs> that's something that I like to watch. Um, I have sped these, this colouring up about three times. So obviously I wish I could colour this fast but yeah three times so not too fast. But again there is quite a lot of it. I do include all of the images in today's video. You'll notice that I'm just doing all of my colours at the same time. So I'm doing all the darkest green, all of the middle green. I just find sometimes when I'm colouring a lot of images with the same colour, it's easier than keep switching out the caps all of the time. Um, I find that my markers get a little bit sticky and I find the lids don't come off as easy. That's probably because my markers need a really good clean. But I generally try on this particular card to do all of the colors at the same time sometimes i do double layers so i'll do two layers of coloring mainly the strawberries were fine sometimes for the greens when they aren't blending so well i will go in and really saturate my cardstock with the colors by doing two coats but as i say for the strawberries i got a really nice blend on my on the first layer these are my favourite greens. I don't tend to steer too far clear of these ones. I just like the tone of them and I really like the way that they blend. So I wanted to add a little bit of shading to my flowers. So just going around the edges with a really light W3 marker and a W0 marker just to give them a little bit of definition, not too much, really quick colouring on these. And then Y26 and Y21, just for the yellow. That's the only part of the yellow that I've got for this card inspiration. And then going in to colour the mice. If you've watched my videos and follow me on my other social media channels, you'll know that this is probably one of my favourite browns. I really like the way it blends. I find it really easy to use and yeah, it's just my go-to colour combo, especially for these little mice. So I pop in some of the darkest colour where I want the darkest area to be, where I think that the light would hit them. I'm not a colouring expert, I just go with what I know and what I'm comfortable doing and I really enjoy colouring this way. So trying to add shadows where I think they'll be, but not really worrying too much about it. Now coming in with my U42, just finish off blending those in and on some of the mice where there's a little bit more area to colour, I did come in with the E41. And on these ones I did come in and do a little bit more darker in the areas just to give that nice contrast.
and then finishing up here, just finish off blending that out. And these little mice are so cute. I did also colour some of the other images in the set, but I didn't end up using them in the end, so I'll have to save those for another project. Just adding a little bit of pink to their cheeks, because I can't colour a critter without having pink cheeks. I use my R81 for that, and then just coming in to add some very light pink to the inside of the ears. And now finally, just colouring in this little rab rabbit, mouse's dungarees again probably one of my favorite blue combinations and i don't know why i jumped straight to the b91 here i do have b93 so i think that's why i was guess struggling to get it to blend but it all worked out in the end just went back with that b95 just to help that all blend together super super cute and really didn't take me long to color at all so now I'm moving on to creating my background for my card. So I've got the quilted heart backdrop in portrait and I have the outside in stitched scallop rectangles there. And that's the largest one in the set that I've used. Cut that from some green cardstock from a Concord and Ninth paper pack. I think it's parsley or it might be clover but it's one of the two, but it's a really lovely green and I thought went well for this colour challenge. I'm just trimming down my um, heart backdrop there and I did end up cutting off a quarter of an inch from each side so it fits nicely within those stitching details on the scalloped rectangle. So just set those aside and now I'm going in with the Henry's ABC's Alpha Dies. I'm going to be cutting the word berry. So I've got the B, E, R, Y, and I'm gonna cut two R's, obviously. Um, but obviously I'm only just showing me you, me cutting out it once. So I line them up onto my mats, just as straight as I possibly can, using a bit of post-it tape there, popping it onto some heavy weight, heavy weight white cardstock, just securing it down with some extra washi and I'm going to run this through my little mini die cutting machine that I've got on my desk. Just trimming that down so that it fits through the machine. Pop that through there and then off camera I did just go ahead and cut another R as well as you can see and I'm securing those down put that washi on the back and secure the letters down so that I can do some ink blending without them all moving all over the place so just pressing those down and I'm bringing in a memento ink pad in ladybug and a really tiny little blending brush and mostly popping all of that color on the top area of these letters I'm just speeding this up here trying to really get a nice contrast between the top and the bottom. So being quite heavy handed when I first apply the ink, but really pulling that ink down and lightening my hand to almost nothing as I bring it down. So finishing these up here. And I did come in with a slightly larger blending brush just to help that all blend seamlessly. So now I've brought back my two panel die cuts. I'm using liquid adhesive to secure that quilted heart backdrop down onto the green scalloped panel. Just pop in some glue in the middle so it sticks down and secures nicely. Some of my glue did ooze out the side, but I've got a bit of paper towel to the side, so I just quickly clean that up. So pressing down, trying not to get any oozing through the hearts. And now I'm bringing back my coloured images. I did colour a few more off camera, exactly the same way with exactly the same colours. And for this one that's going to sit slightly on top, I did cut it in half. I just wanted a little bit more um, of a variation. I didn't want them sitting on top of each other. Just thought that looked nice if they were slightly offset from each other. So I snipped them in half and I'm going to use that little basket to 
cover up the join in the middle. Pop my little mice on and then bringing back my letters and this is going to help me because I need to decide on my placement for the rest of the sentiment. So I've got my mini misty here and some black cardstock and you might also see some other images of other things I've been working on at the moment. So a little sneak peek. Um, using my embossing buddy to just get rid of any static and I'm bringing in the have a happy birthday stamp here and I'm going to use a small embossing pad here or ink pad and I like using a small one especially when I'm doing some selective stamping because you can use just the edges of the stamp or the ink pad to just stamp out the parts you want. So I moved my paper up slightly higher and now I'm gonna go ahead and ink up the happy birthday section. Now that have a might still be a little bit sticky so I do pop a bit of post-it tape over the top as I stamp it just so that it doesn't leave another mark of have a. Hopefully you understand what I mean. And then I'm using my favourite white embossing powder for sentiments. This is the Ranger Super Fine White Embossing Powder. And I did get in a bit of a state with this. It went everywhere. I don't know what was going on. Um, but as you can see, there is embossing powder everywhere. So then I dropped it in the embossing powder. So I was not having a good time with this, but I thought, no, I'm not starting again. So I got a little paintbrush. I have loads of little dry paintbrushes off to the side. I'm just gonna carefully wipe away all the excess from the edges as carefully as I can. And then we're using my heat gun to heat that until it turns nice and bright white and glossy. And then I did find it a bit tricky to trim these, so I just chopped the section in half. And then I used that little plastic guide along the edge to help me get a nice even border all the way around. And I went ahead and did that to the other little sentiment as well. I'm just gonna show one. And that's how I like to trim out my sentiments. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stick on with liquid adhesive all of my little images. Again, I'm just going to use that Lawn Fawn liquid adhesive. It's, I really like the size of this one. I'm really glad they brought out a slightly larger one. I'm going to pop my strawberries on. And for this bottom one, I've got a few layers it's got to sit on. So I do have loads of spare scrap pieces of cardstock sitting next to my desk. So I just grabbed some of that, trimmed out a very thin layer. And this is just going to help everything sit a little bit more flush. So just move that so that it's sitting at the bottom and that will just help everything sit nicely and evenly on the card. Again, I'm going to put that basket in the middle there and I pop some more glue, some more cardstock just to help lift that so that it's sitting on something and everything sits evenly. Especially if you're going to be posting something, you don't want it to get squashed in the post. So I just really like using up my scraps. Popping my little strawberries in the top of the basket and then finally giving my little mouse his strawberry to put in top. Again, coming back in. Now, the way I like to place my letters is usually I will start with the two ends, but for this, I'm going to start off with the two black sentiments, or the black and white sentiments that are going to sit top and bottom of the word berry. And then that gives me an, my placement 
for the die cut letters to sit nice and evenly in the middle. So pop in that happy birthday on there and then I can use that to help guide me for the die cut letters. So here I just start with the two ends so that they're hopefully fairly evenly placed from the edges. Now I'm just going to pop some glue on the back of that green panel and I'm going to secure that to a white A2 sized card base. Secure that down using some more liquid adhesive. And then finally I'm going to be adding some white gel pen details. So I've got some dots on the cheeks and then I'm adding these little highlights on my strawberries. Pretty much every strawberry on the mice. I don't really have any rhyme or reason. I just put it where I feel that they could need a bit of highlight and I just really like the way this looks. And that finishes up this card for today. I really hope you like it. It's really cute and I'm so pleased I've got a chance to use this stamp set and some of my other lawn form goodies. I'll pop all the details down in the description box and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.